Hello and welcome to yet another video of Cornerstones of Math. Let alpha and beta be the two real roots of the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where alpha is the smaller root and beta is the larger root. So we are only dealing with the situation where the equation has real roots and we have one more constraint that the leading coefficient a must be positive because if a is zero, then the equation is not quadratic. And if a is negative, we can simply convert it into more common case where the leading coefficient a is positive. Here, we have to investigate the limits of these roots alpha and beta. The first problem is the case where a approaches zero from the positive side, of course, because we have stated that we are only dealing with the case where a is positive. The second problem is the case where a goes infinity. Okay, so let's start with the first problem where a approaches zero. But first things first, we have to obtain expressions for alpha and beta. From the quadratic formula, we all know that this quadratic equation has these roots. And since alpha is the smaller root and beta is the larger root, and since the coefficient a is positive, we obtain these expressions where alpha is the one with the minus sign here and beta is the one with the plus sign here. Next, we have to divide cases. Generally, a coefficient can have three signs, positive, zero, or negative. Therefore, even with the condition that a being positive, we still have three times three, which is nine cases, which are these. I will of course investigate all nine cases, but let us do that at least a bit smartly by starting from the simplest case. With a being fixed to positive, the simplest case we can find is where the remaining two coefficients b and c are both zero. So let us take a look at this case first. In this case, the equation becomes ax squared equals zero. Therefore, two roots are always alpha equals zero and beta equals zero. And therefore, both limits of alpha and beta as a approaches zero gives zero. So that was the simplest case, and now let's move on to the slightly complicated but still simple cases where only one of the coefficients b and c is zero. Let us start with the case where b equals zero. Then the equation becomes ax squared plus c equals zero, hence x squared equals minus c over a. Here we have already dealt with the case where c equals zero, so the remaining cases are where c is positive and c is negative. First, when c is positive, then this x squared, which is minus c over a, is negative. Therefore, both roots are imaginary. And since we don't deal with complex limits here, we just move on. Next, when c is negative, then x squared becomes positive, so we have two distinct real roots, namely, these roots. Here, since c remains constant, we have constant divided by zero expression. Therefore, as a approaches zero from the right, alpha goes to negative infinity and beta goes to positive infinity. So these are all cases where the coefficient b is zero. Now let's move to another case where one coefficient is zero. This time, coefficient c is zero. Then the equation is now ax squared plus bx equals zero. So we have x times ax plus b equals zero, which gives zero and minus b over a as its roots. Therefore, the sign of the remaining coefficient b will determine which of these will be alpha or beta. So we divide cases like these with b being positive and b being negative. First, if b is positive, then minus b over a becomes negative. So alpha becomes minus b over a and beta becomes zero. Therefore, the limit of alpha is negative infinity and the limit of beta is zero. Next, if b is negative, then minus b over a is now positive. So now we have alpha equals zero and beta equals minus b over a. Therefore, now the limit of alpha is zero and the limit of beta is positive infinity. 
So far, we have covered the cases where at least one coefficient is zero. Now let's move on to the cases where all three coefficients are non-zero. Here, I have already explained that two roots are given like this, alpha with the minus sign and beta with the plus sign. Let us first take a look at the case where b is positive. First, the limit of the smaller root alpha is the limit of this expression. Here, notice that since this 4ac part goes to 0, the entire numerator approaches minus 2b, you know, considering that b is positive. But the denominator approaches 0, so we have negative real number divided by 0 type of limit, so alpha approaches negative infinity. Next, the limit of beta, which is the limit of this expression. Here, notice that as a approaches 0, the numerator now approaches minus b plus b, which is 0. So now we have 0 over 0 type of limit, which is indeterminate. Therefore, in order to calculate this limit, we multiply the expression with opposite sign on both numerator and denominator, that is minus b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. Then the numerator is simplified to 4ac, so we can cancel out 2a, which gives this, and as you can see, the denominator approaches minus 2b, so we have minus c over b as the limit. Notice that these results are true regardless of the sign of c. And for the case where b is negative, we can do similarly. For the limit of alpha, we have this. Here, the numerator approaches minus b minus square root of b squared. But because now b is negative, this square root of b squared now becomes minus b, which gives 0. So now the limit of alpha is in 0 divided by 0 form. Therefore, we multiply minus b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac on both numerator and denominator, which again gives 4ac on the numerator, and cancelling 2a, we have limit of 2c divided by minus b plus square root of b squared minus 4ac, and here, the denominator approaches minus b plus square root of b squared, and this equals minus b plus minus b, because again, b is negative, so in this case as well, the limit is minus c over b. And as for the limit of beta, we have limit of this. And here again, this numerator goes to minus b plus square root of b squared, which is minus b plus minus b, which is minus 2b. So the limit of beta goes to positive infinity. And these results are also true regardless of the sign of c. So we have investigated every case. And the results are nicely summarized in this table. This is the summary of all nine cases we have looked so far. Here, im means that the roots are imaginary numbers. This is all very nice and all, but here we can notice additional stuffs. First, let us take a look at these three cases. These are the cases where b is positive. Here, notice that the limit of alpha is always negative infinity, and the limit of beta is 0 when c equals 0, and minus c over b for other signs of c. But this 0 can be also expressed as minus c over b, where c happens to be 0. So we can combine these three cases and say that when b is positive, the limits are always negative infinity and minus c over b, regardless of the sign of c. And we can say the same thing for these three cases where b is negative. Here, this 0 can be also expressed as minus c over b, where c is 0. So we can say that when b is negative, the limits are always minus c over b and positive infinity, regardless of the sign of c. Therefore, we can categorize our answers with simpler table like this. And now for the next problem. 
What about the limits where a goes to infinity? Here the starting point is the same. Under the given conditions, we have the same expressions for alpha and beta, but in the case of a approaching infinity, this 4ac is the increasing term in the numerator, whether positively or negatively. So the sign of b is not that important, but the sign of c becomes important. So let's divide cases with the sign of c. First, we start with the case where c is negative. Why negative c first? Well, if c is negative, then b squared minus 4ac, a term inside the square root, becomes positive. So the equation has two distinct real roots expressed like these. Therefore, their limits are given like these. Here, notice that denominators have degrees of a to the power of 1, whereas the numerators have degrees of a to the power of 1 half. Therefore, the denominators grow much faster than numerators, hence both limits converge to 0. Next, when c is positive, notice that b squared minus 4ac becomes negative when a becomes sufficiently large. This means that both roots eventually become imaginary for sufficiently large a. Finally, when c equals 0. Here, we have already seen that two roots are 0 and minus b over a. So when b is positive, then alpha becomes minus b over a and beta becomes 0. And when b is negative, then alpha becomes 0 and beta becomes minus b over a. But notice that in both cases, the limits of both alpha and beta converge to 0. So in the end, we obtain this table for the limit of a approaching infinity. As you can see, the table is much simpler compared to a approaching 0 case, and you can see that the sign of b does not matter. And that was all for today's video. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in another video.